Hi there, everybody. Hello, welcome. Hey, there's Caitlin. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully, everybody can hear me okay. Um, let me know in the comments if. Well, I guess if you couldn't hear me, you wouldn't hear that, but <laughs> let me know in the comments how everybody's doing. Um, if this is your first time joining, let us know where you're from. If you're a current art snacker, or maybe if you're thinking about joining art snacks, let us know. Welcome. And I'll give everybody another couple seconds. We'll give it, you know, wait till we get about a minute in, get everybody joined in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody. Glad to have you here with us on a Thursday evening. Um, maybe you are just getting home from work or finishing up dinner, but I'm glad that you're here with me on Art Snacks Live, Art Snacks Open Studio Live. Welcome, welcome. All right, so Today I have um, the March uh, Art Snacks Plus box, um, and I have been very anxiously hanging on to it because I wanted to open it up with everybody here on the Open Studio Live. Um, really quick before I jump into opening up the box, um, I always like to just introduce, just in case you're new, um, maybe you are brand new to Art Snacks, or this is your first time checking out the uh, Art Snacks Open Studio Live. Uh, but if you are not a member of the Mix community, I encourage you to go check it out. It's mix.artsnacks.co um, and it is Art Snacks very own um, social media platform. So it's all artists, um, many art snackers, but you don't have to be an Art Snacks subscriber to join. Um, you can be a, a previous uh, subscriber or a potential subscriber. Um, but really what matters is, you know, if you love making art and talking about art, um, this is the place to be. It's a really great community. Everybody's super nice. Um, it's a great place to post um, brand new projects, works in progress, things you want feedback on, um, or things you're just really proud to share. Um, and there is also a uh, Arts Next uh, Open Studio Live group um, where we post the replays, but you can also uh, share your work. So if you're working on something while you're watching, um, the live stream, you're welcome to post that on there. I'd love to see anything that you're making, especially if you're following along with something I'm drawing. Um, the other really cool thing about Art Snacks is that um, that is where you can get uh, updates about what's going on with Art Snacks. That includes sales, sneak previews, um, all kinds of fun updates. Um, and there's a lot of really fun questions on there that you can, you know, if you want to talk about your favorite art supply. Um, I know that Sarah recently shared in the Wednesday updates that there's this really interesting conversation about hot press paper and cold press paper. So that's just some of the fun that's over on Mix. So I'll show this again at the end of the live stream, but it's mix.artsnacks.co. Definitely check it out. Um, and the other cool thing to share is that um, March is Art Snacks birthday month. Um, so it has been 10 years since Art Snacks first began. Um, it seems just like yesterday, but it has been 10 years. So there is still a birthday sale going on. Um, if you go to the Art Snacks shop um, that, and you put in the code 10 years, um, up through the end of March, so the last day to do this is March 31st, um, but you can get $10 off any three, six, or 12 month subscription plan. That also includes quarterly plans. Um, so that's over at shop.artsnacks.co. Um, but definitely check that out, especially if you were thinking about joining, you weren't sure. Um, this is a really good time to do it because you can use that promo code for your subscription. Um, so I'll share that again at the end. Um, so, and if you're curious about what comes in the Art Snacks Plus box, you'll get a little preview here of what we got in the March box. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and then we'll look at everything together um, and then, uh, you know, make some art and test out some of those supplies. And hopefully my cutter will cooperate. It's not very sharp, but it does the trick to get through the tape. I should have pre-cut this. Now you guys can watch me struggle to up in the box. But it has that nice sturdy tape, you know, so that it doesn't open up in transit. But then I'm always fighting it a little bit. Okay. 
You did it. You did it, everybody. Um, okay. So, get this out. I always struggle to get the paper out, too. <laughs> okay. So, we'll set our box aside, and then we'll talk about what we got in the box. I'm very excited because this is some of my favorite paper. Um, so, oh, and there's brand new bubble mailers, which is exciting. They're nice and smooth on the outside. So all the supplies always come um, safely packaged in a bubble mailer, um, especially because sometimes you get um, supplies that are on the fragile side in terms of, you know, you don't want it to get squeezed or broken. So everything's always safely packaged. Um, so the, there are a couple of different types of subscription boxes, and you can check them out on the Art Snacks shop website. Um, they have the standard Art Snacks box that comes with full-size supplies, but this is the plus box. And the cool thing is you get a couple extra supplies and um, a surface. Um, so usually you'll get some kind of paper. Sometimes it's got canvas in there. Um, so it's really a uh, really nice thing. And the cool thing, too, is that when you get the plus box, you have all the supplies. Um, so I didn't you notice that I didn't have anything other than you know my little um, cutter to open up the box because everything I have here I have the paper and the supplies it's all curated to go together which is really cool um, um, and uh, so that's the cool thing about the plus box um, and then there's also a couple other of cool um, subscriptions that you can get. Um, there is watercolor snacks. So if you like watercolor, um, that's really great. It also has a group on mix um, and uh, different um, live streams and lessons from the amazing artist uh, Brie. Um, she's been with Art Snacks a long time and uh, you might know her as Dread Pirate. Dread Pirate Brie on Instagram. She's really great. Um, there's also art journal snacks um, and have the amazing Erin Partridge uh, helping with that. And that is really cool. That's another subscription box if you're into art journaling. Um, that Those are some of the other cool uh, options that are out there. Um, but here is uh, the um, bubble mailer opened. So um, in every box, you get these uh, information cards. So I'll read through these uh, as I go through the different supplies. Um, but they're really helpful because sometimes there are things that are brand new. Um, for me, for example, there are sometimes supplies that I've never seen before, which is really exciting, but I don't always know how to use them or um, you know, what to use them with, um, if there's something that I should be using water with or um, you know, the different ways you can use it. So it's really helpful. And we have our green burrito. And you'll get some supplies in there too. Ooh, and there is a special sticker because of um, being the birthday month. So there's this really cool um, 10th anniversary uh, sticker in there. So that's pretty exciting. Um, okay. So it looks like we have a couple of colored pencils. So these are Derwent Chroma Flow colored pencils. So you can see we got, I got the green and the pink. Um, and if you got your Art Snacks Plus box, let me know what colors you got because um, everybody gets a different set of colors, although you may have gotten the same as me. Um, so definitely share in the comments if you have already opened up your Plus box or maybe you were waiting too. Um, let me know what you got. Uh, in your box. Um, so the Chroma Flow colored pencils um, lay down smooth, vibrant color with derma or Derwent Chroma Flow pencils. Formulated with rich pigments, they make blending, layering, and shading a breeze. Their premium core strength can handle pressure when in use or sharpened. Um, so that's great. So that means that these can handle um, really heavy layers of color. So I'm excited to use these. And I'm especially excited to use them on this Legion Lennox cotton paper. So I'm going to take a minute to highlight that because this is my favorite paper and I discovered it through Art Snacks. Um, I got like a little teeny one one time so I'm excited to have a nice um, full size um, paper pad. But this is really great. It's a uh, really nice thick paper. So it has, it's pretty dense. It's like a, almost like a cardstock kind of weight. Um, and so this is made in the USA. It's 100% cotton and works wonderfully with a 
across a range of fine art applications, especially colored pencil, graphite, pastels, and charcoal. It's designed to withstand both delicate and bold impressions. This 250 GSM paper is sturdy and absorbent, and you'll find 15 sheets in this pad, each featuring a softly textured white surface. So I'm very excited to um, play around with the colored pencil on this paper because I think it's just going to look super gorgeous, um, but we'll see that together. So I'll put this over here. And then there's also um, a tube of gouache in here. Oh, and Jessica also got uh, the yellow ochre gouache, um, but the scarlet and lilac pencils. That sounds beautiful. Chloe got pink and purple. Oh, what a great combination. Great, denim and grass green. I love the names of the colors. I always thought that would be a fun job to name um, things uh, like paint colors or nail polish colors or colored pencil colors. I always thought that'd be fun. Um, so this is Royal Talon's Extra Fine Gouache. Um, oh my gouache, get ready for an opaque paint with a high pigment load. Royal Talon's Extra Fine Gouache is a unique gouache that comes more fluid, becomes more fluid as it's mixed, allowing you to cover large areas evenly. It dries quickly within minutes and uniformly to a velvety matte finish. You'll want, the, you'll want to thin this paint with water to achieve smoothness and consistency. So I'll have to grab a little um, paint palette for this and a water brush so that we can play around with it. But um, if you haven't used gouache paint before, it's really fun. And um, it's great that it's paired with colored pencils because when gouache paint is dry, you can go back on top of it with colored pencil and it looks really, really beautiful. Um, it's one of my favorite things to make illustrations with. So I'm particularly excited about this combination. I think it's gonna be really nice. Um, oh, and so this actually also has a water brush, uh, which um, I don't have water handy right now, but um, if I did, uh, I could fill up this water brush with um, water. And th so it just goes into the barrel here. And then you screw the lid back on and then you can squeeze it and that will the water will come out of the brush and you can paint with it that way and it's really nice especially if you're somebody who likes to go outside to paint um, or you know to work outdoors um, and you don't always want to have you know a container of water or especially if you're maybe you're somebody who likes to go on hikes and take your what your art supplies with you um, it's really nice to have that so I have a um, a water brush that's already loaded up. It's just more convenient since I'm sitting here, I'm um, going through everything with everybody. Um, but if you have your plus box, you can certainly use this as well. And I'm seeing some of the other colors that people got. So there's also vermilion, which is a really beautiful sort of red color, um, permanent rose gouache, uh, scarlet and lilac pencils, vermilion gouache. Um, wow, that's really pretty. So very exciting. Um, yeah, vermilion is red, right? Or is it green? Now I'm questioning myself. <laughs> That's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I know that. And then I hear myself say it out loud. And I'm like, is that right? So correct me if I'm wrong. If that's the wrong color, let me know. Um, so the the um, water brush, that was an art alternatives water brush. So I don't want to skip over reading that. So you can paint anywhere, anytime. This water brush from Art Alternatives features flexible nylon bristles and a squeezable barrel. Fill it up with water, ink, or any other wet medium you'd like and watch the liquid flow evenly and effort effortlessly from the tip. Um, so, uh, you know, you don't have to use just water in here. If you want to use um, like a, a colored ink, that would be really beautiful. Um, you could also you know, fill it with, like it said, any kind of uh, wet medium. So you could even try um, maybe a thin paint or something like that. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then there's also Ambo Fudenosuke Twin Tip Brush Pen in black and gray. And uh, it you can add another dimension to your work with the Tombow Fudenusuke Twin Tip Water or, uh, Brush Pen. It has two different colors of water-based pigmented ink, black and gray. The flexible brush tips produce fine lines to medium strokes. Um, so it has uh, one side on there and another side on this side. So it has two kind of thin tips to it, um, but you get different thicknesses 
uh, with that. So that will be fun. And it is um, water-based. Um, so that's always something to keep in mind when you are using um, any wet mediums or water with it. Uh, just make sure that uh, you test it with the water so that you don't accidentally smudge your lines um, unexpectedly. Um, and Chloe says uh, those types of brushes are their go-to for watercolor. So yeah, I always like these a lot too. They're just so convenient, um, you know, rather than uh, filling up a cup with water and then having to go change the water out. It's really nice. Um, so last but not least, we have Jelly Roll Metallic um, pens on here. So let me find those. So those were a plus box feature. Um, so these are the Secura Jelly Roll Metallic Pens. It's a set of five, and it's time to shine. Secura Jelly Roll Metallic Pens feature gleaming polished colors that work well on both light and dark surfaces. The gel ink glides on smoothly and won't feather or bleed through most paper. It's also archival, so your work and the metallic sheen will last for years to come, and you can enjoy a set of five different shimmery hues. And I can attest to the longevity of these pens because I remember using Jelly Roll pens uh, in elementary school when I used to write in my journal, and they truly do stand the test of time because all of my journal entries are still... Uh, just as sparkly and shiny as the day that I wrote them. So uh, these definitely have a nice and long lifespan. So, um, oh, and I cannot forget, of course, I also have the snack that comes in uh, the box. So you always get a snack with your art snacks. Um, so this month it is Airheads uh, snacks. Um, so, you know, you can always enjoy that while you are working. I'm going to save mine for later just because I'll be chatting and you don't want to listen to me chat with a mouthful of airheads, I'm sure. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up and then we'll uh, do some swatching and then figure out a way to, um, what to draw with it and you know how to use all these tools together. So let me know if you are working on something. Um, it sounds like a lot of you got the uh, March Plus box so let me know if you got all of your supplies together um, or, and, or if you've already tested them together and you worked on something that you're really excited about. Um, yeah, let me know. <laughs> Caitlin says, I forgot the question, but jelly rolls are always the answer. And that is the truth. I have to agree with that. <laughs> jelly rolls are always the answer. Um, okay, so I'm just going to grab whatever closest sort of plasticky material I have because I'm going to use that to um, put my paint on. So you can, you know, if you have a paint palette, that's ideal. Um, but if not, anything that has sort of like a, you know, a smooth surface that you can easily clean off um, is also an option. <laughs> um, so... I'm gonna put my, some squeeze out some of this paint on here. And then that'll just be my little makeshift paint palette. Um, in an ideal world, I would have thought to bring some water to fill this with ahead of time, but we're gonna pretend that this, this brush is this brush. Um, if you have your art alternatives brush, um, definitely break that out and use that. So since the paint's gonna take, it has a fast dry time, but I wanna give it some time um, to dry. I'm gonna start by swatching out just a block of that on here first. And I'm gonna do um, a little bit of like a thicker layer and then I'll sort of thin it out just so that I have the variety of coverage on here. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm reading Jessica's comment um, that you tested them out, but you weren't sure to make out of it. Um, and you had lots of fun swatching. I think that's great. Um, sometimes it's just fun to play with the materials. And even if you're not quite sure what to do with, um, you know, all of them together, uh, maybe you'll find like a, you know, a really fun use for one of them or maybe a few of them. 
Um, and that's great too. Or maybe, you know, you try one out and you realize you want to get a bigger set of something. Um, that's happened to me <laughs> before where I tried one thing out and I was like, I need more colors. So sometimes that happens too. Um, but it's like, just like the name suggests, it's just like trying out a little snack. It's a little bite size uh, test of, you know, an art supply. And then sometimes you decide you want to get more of it. So I'm trying out the colored pencils. They really do lay on this paper so nicely. Sorry, I'm shaking around the camera a little bit. I'm just getting too into uh, drawing on the paper. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, um, and I, I assume you're talking about the jelly roll pens, Caitlin, um, to use them to go to doodle over sketchbook pages you never finished or wasn't super happy with. I think that is a really awesome idea and a great way to fill out a sketchbook, um, especially if uh, you're trying to come up with ideas and you're feeling stuck. It's always good to go back and uh, revisit old sketches. So I love that suggestion. That's awesome. Oh yeah. So yeah, it was the um, jelly roll. That's great. So these colors look really nice together. Um, and even though it's a, a lighter tint of red, um, red and green are complementary colors. So they look really nice together as a pair. So Again, just really thoughtful of, um, you know, when they're curating the boxes of how they go together. It's really nice. We have colored pencil. And I really like this paper, too, because it's really smooth. It's almost like a hot press paper, but it still has a little bit of a texture to it. Just nothing that's really heavily textured. So when I lay down um, my colored pencil, you know, I can, I can get it really smooth if I press down hard and really fill in all of those little bumps. Um, but if I want to see the paper texture come through, it's nice because I still have that effect. Yeah, you like the pink and green together? Yeah, me too. I, I think it looks really pretty. It's almost like, a, you know, not really an unexpected combination, but I feel like if I was picking colors, I wouldn't pick pink and green. So it's nice that, you know, that was kind of like a suggestion from the box. So this is the, um, I think the Tombow, yes, the Tombow dual tip pen. Um, and so you can see I can get really, really thin lines um, if I hold it sort of up straight more. So I'm drawing with the tip, but you can get a thicker line um, if you rotate it and you can kind of, depending on how you hold it, sometimes I like to change up how I hold a pen so I can get a different grip. It's a little harder to rotate and get it to be a smooth line. But if you press down on it, it's a, it is a flexible nib. I always just get nervous doing that. I remember breaking so many marker nibs as a kid. <laughs> um, okay, and then so, one side is like a dark gray, um, and then the other side is a lighter gray. That's pretty cool. Ah, I was not expecting that, actually. <laughs> I was surprised by that, so that's pretty cool. Um, so I like that. It's nice because, you know, it's like having two pens in one. Um, so it's not just having the different size nibs, uh, but it's, you know, having different colors. So that's pretty cool. Oh, Caitlin, your middle school bathroom was pink and green. Oh, that's so cute. I feel like that was like a really um, fun uh, color scheme for a little while. Because I feel like I remember um, just seeing a lot of things that were th that color combination. I like it. Ooh, this yellow looks very gold. It's a very pretty color. I'm going to hold it up a little closer to the camera for you so you can see more of the shimmer and the shine from the marker. So you can really see the glitter that's in there. It's just so fun to, to draw and write with glittery pens. 
And the way they sit on top of this paper is really nice. Um, because it feels like it's almost like three dimensional because it's so um, inky. It just like looks really nice. So I'll do another show and tell of the sparkles. And those of you who have the markers in real life, I'm sure can tell that this just doesn't quite do the same justice as seeing them in real life because they're so shiny and sparkly. I think when I was um, a kid, I had a set of these or I had at least had like a gold color one. And I used to embellish all my little drawings with um, gold spots uh, and areas on it. So I drew a lot of characters that were either like princesses or magical and had magical jewelry and crowns. And I always, uh, you know, I would just do like a, a pencil drawing or an ink drawing. Um, and then I would go in and, you know, add a couple little areas where there were, um, you know, gold or uh, really sparkly little things. So maybe I'll, I'll share that on my Instagram or something. So I have all my old sketchbooks too. Um, I'll share that in my stories or something like that. So my gouache feels dry. So I'm going to go on top of that and just kind of draw some lines. Um, but I definitely recommend you trying this out yourself because the feeling of it is so, just feels so nice um, the way the pencil goes on top of the gouache because even though the gouache is smooth, it just has just the tiniest bit of grit to it. Um, and so it grips the pencil really nicely. And I don't really know how else to describe it other than it's just like, is a really satisfying feeling to draw on top of the paint. <laughs> um, so I, I was saying I often like to do that in my illustrations um, because of how, I love how the colors look together. The other cool thing about this, and I'll hold it up again so you can see it in more detail. So um, the colored pencil is wax, right? So when it sits on top of the um, paint, it has like a really opa opaque um, look to it. Uh, but at the same time, even though it's sitting on top and the color comes through really nicely, you still have some of that yellow coming through underneath, especially in the areas where you might not be pressing down so hard. So instead of having the white of the paper show through, now you have this undertone of yellow. I think that's so cool. And you can start to mix really interesting colors and create really interesting effects that way, really beautiful textures. I think that's so nice. Um, and another reason why I was so excited to see the gouache and colored pencils together, because I think they complement each other as mediums so well. So, um, yeah, uh, Lisa mentioned um, that they like the different shades of yellow that you can get from gouache. Yeah, exactly. Like you can, you know, if you have more paint on your brush, you can get a really nice, intense, um, darker color. Uh, but if you water it down, then you can have a nice lighter color. So it's really cool. Oh, good question. Uh, does it show through on the other side of the paper? So we'll take a look. Um, so it does not show through. Um, because this paper is the cotton paper um, and it's kind of a heavier paper, it can handle uh, layers of um, different media. So the ink did not show through and neither did the paint, um, which is really nice. So you can really layer it up uh, and, you know, a, you know, paper can only handle so much, so you don't want it to be too watery, um, but it's nice because, you know, you don't have to be afraid um, of you know bleeding through to the other side um which is uh i think really um really nice feature and you can also do the opposite where if you have um you know some watercolor and you want to fill in um a shape or something around i mean not watercolor i'm gonna say colored pencil <laughs> if you have colored pencil on the paper and you want to fill out a shape on top you know, you can use the gouache paint really um, thick 
on top and have it be opaque and cover it up. Or you can add more water. And the color pencils are waxy, so it will there will be a little resistance. But you can add a wash of color on top. Um, but you still have your colored pencil drawing showing through. Um, and while I have this, I'll just test out. So it looks like once this ink is dry, it's not going anywhere when you add wet media on top. Um, so that is really nice to know if you're somebody who likes to do a drawing and then outline it and then fill it in with color. You don't have to be scared as long as your um, ink is totally dry. So you let it sit for a couple of minutes. We don't have to worry about it going anywhere um, once you put a wet media on top. So you don't have to be scared about blurring your line work or accidentally smudging it. Um, and looks like same deal with the jelly rolls, although um, it does look like it picks up a little bit of the um, ink. So you might want to save that part for last if you're going to add um, any kind of little sparkly embellishments on top. Um, and I, I uh, definitely recommend checking out, it's also on the Art Snacks YouTube page, um, the James Burke uh, unboxings, um, because he really goes to town with all of the art supplies and tests them out to their absolute limits, um, really tries out different ways to combine them together, ways, um, unconventional ways to use the supplies, which I really admire. Um, I've been super inspired by a lot of his videos um, just to play around and try different things. Um, so this is kind of like a, a pretty like basic test of them, but definitely check it out if you're looking for something that's a little bit more like unafraid to really see where uh, they can take those uh, art supplies. So that's um, also on the Art Snacks YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Um, I think the March video is already up because um, I was very excited to see what uh, he did with those. So I think in this little bit of space at the bottom, I'm just going to do a little drawing with all of these uh, tools together. So I'm going to rotate because I think I want to use um, the paper vertically instead of horizontally. Um, and I think I'm just going to draw, I drew a little character last week, um, but I think I'm going to draw another one. Um, and let me see if I have, oh yes, I have my, I have a pencil sharpener right here. I already need to sharpen my pencils um, because it's such a nice soft uh, colored pencil lead that they're already ready to be sharpened. So is, if anybody else is drawing along, let me know what you're thinking about drawing. I'm not really sure. I'm just going to kind of wing it um, and just see what kind of character appears. If you were watching last week, I just kind of doodled a little gnome. Um, so I talked a little bit about my sketching process, but I really just kind of start out with some basic shapes and lines um, and then kind of see what emerges from there. Sometimes I have a plan. Sometimes I don't. Um, today I don't really have, uh, I don't really have a plan, so. Oh, Jessica, you were inspired by the yellow color to um, try painting some sunflowers. I love that. Uh, Lisette is drawing a jellyfish. I love that too. Ooh, you know what? That actually kind of makes me want to draw a mermaid, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. So I'm sketching with this pink colored pencil because I just want some really nice light lines on here. Um, so I don't want, because uh, I want to draw on top of them without having all my sketches super um, showing through underneath. So, but I do like to just kind of do a very light um, sketch on top and then I'll go over more defined lines as I go. <laughs> and maybe she has a little pet jellyfish. I haven't done very many uh, underwater drawings lately. I like to draw mermaids every now and again, but I haven't done one for a while, so. I loved mermaids as a little kid, of course, because of the Little Mermaid. Um, so, and she was at the time. Now there are more, which is great. 
at the time she was the only redheaded princess. Um, and I, I also have red hair, so she was uh, definitely my favorite for a very long time. So it made me want to be a mermaid even more than I already did. Okay, so I have a sketch. Um, it's a little hard to see, but um, I think it's going to take uh, take shape a little bit more. And I wish I, I had water in this brush because this has a nice wide um, shape to it. But I am just going to add a very light wash of yellow on top. And I'm glad that this uh, dries quickly <laughs> so we don't have to wait forever for for it to dry but I'm just going to put a layer of water down a wash of this gouache color um, and uh, use that as the base and we'll, we'll color on top. And another cool trick um, that I learned is that uh, if you have a graphite drawing, um, that if you want to seal it onto your paper, meaning if you have a drawing in your sketchbook and you don't want it to smudge all over, oops, I didn't realize how shiny that was, sorry. Um, if you didn't, if you wanted your um, graphite drawing to stay uh, in place and not smudge as you turn your sketchbook pages, if you put a light wash of watercolor on top, um, it will seal your drawing to the paper and it won't smudge. So I thought that was pretty neat. I'm gonna add a little more color right here. And I am going to grab a paper towel. I'll move them if I don't need some desk in here. It's okay. I always have one laying around. This one's from last week. I'm gonna grab a paper towel and just kind of lightly dab some of the paint off too. So sometimes I like to do this um, when I'm impatient. But it's also a good trick if you don't want the color to be so intense. So I just want a really light wash of color on here. Um, so I don't really want a super deep, uh, vibrant yellow. Just enough to kind of give it a light tone. Um, and then maybe I'll go back on top um, and add some more yellow. Maybe like her hair or her fins or something will be yellow. But um, for now, uh, I just want my... Um, background to be light and it, it helps dry it out a little quicker. So normally I would let this sit and um, dry for a little longer, but I want to keep going with the drawing. Um, I, I don't think anybody wants to sit here and literally watch paint dry. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and keep going with the drawing. But, um, you know, if you're, if you feel like the paper's too wet, you can always let your drawing um, have a little bit longer to dry. So I think um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use the gray to outline um, because I don't want the outline to be super dark just yet. I kind of want to build up a little bit more, um, and I think gray is a really nice uh, color for outlining. So I'm going to do that. Oh, Chloe uh, says the red is giving you strawberry. Oh, I love that. Oh, thanks, Caitlin. Caitlin said that James would be proud of my swatch page. I appreciate that. So, yeah, if anybody else was inspired to draw a mermaid, let me know. Um, and if you finish your drawing, uh, either tonight or tomorrow, definitely share it in the mix group because I would love to see So I, the kind of style that I draw in is um, a picture book style. So I like to do illustrations for picture books and like graphic novels, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where my style is. So I'd be curious to see what other kind of styles people are working on in, if you're drawing maybe more realistically, or if you also like to draw 
in a, um, you know, kind of like cartoony way or in an illustration-y type of way. But what's so cool is, um, you know, lots of people could all be drawing the same thing and the drawings will never look the same because everybody has their own unique style. Um, so I think that that's fun, um, especially if everybody's working on a similar theme. So she's a little like bemused by her little friend. Maybe her friend is being silly or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's a great question. So a great question from Jessica. Um, do we have a hashtag to share that we create um, during the Open Studio Live? So that is a really good question. Um, I think for when I've posted on Instagram, I haven't used the um, hashtag on Mix because uh, I post in the Mix group. But on Instagram, I've used Art Snacks Open Studio, um, hashtag Art Snacks Open Studio. I've used hashtag Art Snacks Open Studio Live. You can also tag Art Snacks if you want to do that. Um, and you, you know, you can mention that you drew something during the live. Um, so yeah, that'd be really great. Okay, so um, officially use the hashtag Art Snacks and Art Snacks Open Studio. So thank you. We have um, Lee on tonight, if I remember correctly. So thank you. That's awesome. Let me give her some freckles. This will be Flame show bathing suit top. This is some inspiration from the Little Mermaid here. <laughs> oh, it is Lee. Hey, Lee. <laughs> Thank you. That was probably said earlier in the stream, and I just missed it. So sorry about that. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for the summertime coming up. I'm really looking forward to that. And for going swimming, that's going to be really fun. I don't know if everybody else is a fan of going swimming. I was very lucky as a kid because both of my best friends growing up had places to swim at their houses. So one friend had a pool at their house. My other friend had um, a pond. So we would swim in their pond all the time. We would of course, pretend to be mermaids, as, as you do when you're a kid and you're swimming. I always thought that was really fun. And even though I'm an adult now, every time I go swimming, I still kind of pretend that I'm a mermaid. Because, you know, why not? It's fun. <laughs> But I don't get to go swimming as much these days, um, just because I'm so busy with everything. It's not like when I was a kid and I, I got to, you know, go swimming every day. That was always really fun. But I hope to go swimming at least once this summer. Okay. So we have some line work down, just a quick little sketch of a mermaid. And I'm thinking that I'm gonna color her in green. She has like fish colors. And that will also kind of help cover up my sketchy lines. Does anybody else have fun plans for the summer? Any trips or even just relaxing? Um, doing nothing totally counts as summer plans in my book. Um, I think I will be doing a lot of that <laughs> this summer. 
Um, but I don't have any trips or anything planned. Um, I'm just looking forward to being able to have, you know, free weekends and doing lots of drawing, having time to draw is going to be a big thing for me this summer. Time to work on projects, all that good stuff. So, oh, cool. Laurelyn is remodeling a dollhouse. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, Caitlin uh, was a lifeguard. Oh, yeah, so you were also a redheaded mermaid at the pool. Yes, I love that. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I think every little girl with red hair, maybe not every little girl, but at least a lot of little girls with red hair dreamed of being um, Ariel. <laughs> I should say lots of little kids probably dreamed of being mermaids. It's probably so fun. Lots of fun summers being mermaids. <laughs> but yeah, that's that sounds really fun, remodeling a dollhouse. I always thought about doing that. But maybe one day when I have a lot more time, I'm not working on projects. I, re I really like miniatures. Um, I always thought they were really cool. And I love little tiny versions of things. Oh, planning a trip around Michigan. That's really cool. Yes. It, lots of art supplies in there. And see lots of lighthouses. Yes, that sounds really cool. That sounds like a really nice way to spend a summer, too. Because you'll be by the water. Oh, Lisa was another redhead who loved the Little Mermaid. Yay! I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think a lot of kids uh, enjoyed that movie. And I'm excited to see the uh, the new one. Eventually, I don't know if I'll go see it in theaters, but um, I definitely want to see that. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so I just kind of went over with some um, a basic layer of green, um, but now I want to go in and add in um, some more uh, variety of color and layering in color. So I'll probably go in with more green, but um, in some parts, like on here, I'm going to add in, I think I'm going to make her hair like a pink color. And then I might go in and make her tail more yellowy. So you can really layer up the colors and get more variety that way. But I started out with kind of giving everything a base of green. Oh, cool. So I'm, I'm re, uh, rereading through some of the comments. So Paula um, is the one that's going to go see lighthouses on an RV trip. That's really cool. Oh, how nice. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. You're going to have a great time. Caitlin's going to be doing lots of sewing projects. I love that. Oh, that's okay. You're welcome, Jane. Yeah, sorry that uh, you missed the first part, but no big deal. We just kind of started, so time really does fly. I can't believe it's already um, almost 8.48. Oh, my gosh. I just get so lost in the drawing. But that's the fun of, you know, working on art is that you can kind of just get lost in it and lose track of time. So I'll try to kind of wrap up a little bit. Since we only have a couple minutes left. Um, but, yeah. Oh, how cool. Yeah, uh, Laurelin's talking about a miniature lighthouse. How cool. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. It'd be really cool if it had a working light in it, too. Chloe, you're drawing a ladybug? That's so cool. I hope that um, if you're able to share either on Mix or Instagram, please uh, please do because I'd really love to see that. Mm. 
And I think I'll add a little bubble of dried paint on here. If that happens to you, if you um, if your gouache uh, dries out a little bit, just keep adding some water to it. It will usually revive, um, even if it seems a little dried out. Gouache, it sometimes it takes a while, but a lot of the time you can get it um, going again and you can paint with it, even if it seems like it's dried out. And if you leave it out for a really, really long time, then you, you know, might not be able to get it to be uh, flowing again, but usually if you leave it out for like a day or something, if you come back to it. But if you, so if you're somebody who uses a palette and you put your paints on, um, if you're using gouache, a trick I learned um, in art school was that you can put a damp paper towel on your palette first and then put your paint on top of that. Um, like when you squeeze out your paint uh, blobs of color, you can mix them on, you know, the actual palette and not the paper towel because that will just soak up all your paint. Um, but if you put your paint blobs on a damp paper towel and then you can either seal it, like if your paint palette has a lid, you can put the lid on or you can put a piece of saran wrap on top and that will help preserve your paints and they won't dry out quite as quickly. Um, especially if you're working on a longer project um, and you squeezed out too much paint, you don't think you'll use it all. That'll help save your paint. Um, and the other thing you can do is if you have a spray bottle with water, you can mist it and kind of revive the paint a little bit um, before you start working with it. So those are some tricks if you're working with gouache um, that, you know, you can keep your, your paint fresh um, and get a lot more usage out of it um, so that you're not, you know, letting all your paint dry out. So just some tips and tricks. So I'm just adding some scales with my pretty green sparkly pen. I always like drawing patterns like this. I think it's fun. It always looks really cool when you see all of the, the pattern together. I'm going to add some purple sparkles in your hair. Yeah, Caitlin, that's an awesome question. Um, so Caitlin mentioned that she's thinking about making Art Snacks a birthday card because we still have a birthday month left. Um, we're not quite finished with March yet. Um, and asked for the P.O. box. So I'll read that out when um, that gets posted in there. Great question. Yes, if you feel so inclined to send some cool artwork or, you know, a thank you card or a birthday card or something fun um, to Art Snacks, uh, they do have a P.O. box and you can send them cool things. So we'll have that ready to share in just a minute. Um, but yeah, this, uh, I have to say the way that the um, jelly roll pens are going on the paper where I painted it feels so nice. It's so soft. Um, it just like it sits on top of the paper. It's kind of buttery. Ah, it's so nice. Let's see. Give her silver eyes. And maybe some little earrings. And a ring. This is what I used to like to do as a kid. I would find all, all the spots where I could give like jewelry or like fun little, little uh, accessories. Stuff like that. I always like to add little scales all over since she's a fish. Oh, great. Okay, so if you want to send anything to Art Snacks, um, the P.O. Box is um, Art Snacks LLC P.O. Box 336 Brookline MA02446. So very cool, thank you for sharing that. I 
a couple more stories. And then, of course, I always like to add bubbles around So as you can see, I'm using kind of an unexpected color palette for something that is, you know, an underwater scene. So if there's something that you want to draw, but you don't think you have the colors um, that you think you would use, um, do it anyway and just try an unexpected color palette because you never know um, that, you know, it might turn out uh, differently than you expect. Um, and it might look, end up looking really cool. So I'm just going over and darkening up a couple of little lines on here that I want to be more bold. So her face stands out a little more. And we'll also make our little jellyfish more bold. So I'm going to just add my little signature on here. There. So that was my little art snacks challenge on there. Um, so lots of really cool, fun supplies. So I'll do a quick recap because I know we had some friends joining us a little bit later. Um, so I used a different uh, water brush just because it's the one I had water in. Um, but we got the Art Alternatives water brush. Um, I was using the Royal Talons uh, Yellow Ochre gouache. That's the color I got. We may have gotten a different one. We have the Derwent Chroma Flow colored pencils, very nice um, colored pencils on this paper. Um, a five pack of je sparkly jelly roll pens, the Sakura jelly roll pens, um, a, a childhood favorite of mine too. Um, and then the Tombow brush pen, it has two different tips on it. And then the paper we were working on tonight is the um, Legion Lennox cotton paper. Um, just a quick reminder, don't forget that if you're thinking about subscribing, you can still use that promo code for 10 years. Um, the, well, you can't use the promo code for 10 years. You can use the promo code 10 years until March 30th, and you can get $10 off any 3, 6, or 12-month subscription plan that also includes the quarterly plans. So again, you have until March 31st um, to do that. Um, and don't forget to uh, hang out with us on Mix. Um, so check it out. Um, definitely share your work. I'll share a picture of my uh, Little Mermaid and Swatch page, Swatch page on there. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, check out the um, the group, uh, the Art Snacks Open Studio Live group over there. Um, we post our updates, we post the replay, um, and I'm going to try to start making sure that I share the tools I'm planning to use ahead of time just in case you want to follow along. Um, so thank you all so much. Uh, we just posted in there the link if you want to check out Mix. Um, and I had a really great time uh, drawing with everybody, so thank you so much for hanging out with me. It was a really good time. I'm really excited to see what you drew. Um, feel free to, uh, again, use that hashtag, hashtag art snacks or hashtag art snacks open studio to share that. So I hope you all have a great rest of your night and I hope to see you next week, next Thursday. So bye everybody.